There's a rare skill set that few have mastered, but everybody wants more of, and it's called discipline. Discipline is your best friend. It's the ability to make yourself do things that you know you should do, even when you do not want to. Personally, this is one of the main things preventing progress on my goals. I wanna get better at this. So to do that, I wanna test Ali Abdal's five techniques for what he calls effortless self-discipline. Because anyone can talk about facts like this and I could tell you a lot of information, but instead of doing that, I wanna live this and see if it works for an average guy like me. Also, are they sustainable? Which are the best? And are they more or less effortless as claimed? I haven't really felt effortless discipline descending upon me. So I guess I'm here to show you kind of what it looks like to turn information into action and what that process looks like. So let me see if I can memorize what these five things are, what each one of them kind of does and why they work, and see if I can do all of that in about 30 minutes. Oh, my brain. Okay, it actually wasn't that bad. All I had to do was take some notes on each point, and then what I would do is pause the video and repeat back to him and explain what that point was. And then I would look back at my notes and see if I got it right, and basically putting it in my own words. And after doing that two or three times for each point, I basically had it. Well, actually, let me see if I can explain all the important points that I learned in an 11 minute video to you in about 60 seconds or less. And I'll let you be the judge of how well I learned. And the clock starts now. He covered five things in that video. He covered mental contrasting, implementation intentions, um, reducing environmental friction, uh, monitoring and tracking, and making it enjoyable slash energizing. Now, let me break down each one very briefly for you because they're actually pretty interesting. Mental contrasting is when you vividly imagine where you are now and also where you want to be in the future. What that does is it creates a sense of urgency and a gap that you then try to step into and try to fill. Implementation intentions is basically if then statements. If this happens, then I will do this. If I get distracted, then I will get up and walk around the room and then sit back down and start again. Also known as habit stacking. Reducing environmental friction, pretty obvious and self-explanatory. Making your environment something that is not distracting, etc. Monitoring and tracking what gets measured gets managed and what gets managed gets improved. So making sure you're very clear on what's actually happening. And the last one, make it energizing and enjoyable, comes directly from his book about how if we make the process enjoyable and fun, then we don't have to mobilize as much discipline to do the thing. Whew. Was that 60 seconds or less? I have no idea. Now comes the fun part because I get to look at where I want to be more disciplined and where I want to apply these five methods. Luckily for me, I'm working on a specific video project that's very difficult and time consuming. So it makes it the perfect test subject. If you're curious how it goes, at the end of this video, I'll show you the finished product along with hopefully how much time I saved. Anyway, here's how I'm going to apply these five methods. Before beginning work on the video project, do a minimum of one minute of mental contrasting, spend a minimum of two minutes identifying the top three obstacles and write down one if then statement for each obstacle. Ask, is there anything I can do to reduce environmental friction? Set a timer tracking each work session and log it. Ask, is there any way to make the task more enjoyable or energizing? The most important thing about this plan for me is that it can't take more than five minutes. I have two reasons for this. First, if anything is even slightly complicated to start, it rarely becomes a habit. Second, if it takes me more than five minutes, there's a good chance that I'm actually using these methods as another way of procrastinating. Now that I have a plan, let's see if this helps me effortlessly do the things I don't want to do. Okay, so I'm about to begin the first like deep work session. So I did two minutes of mental contrasting. And then within that, I kind of combined it with number two, which is visualize the top three obstacles and create if then statements. My three obstacles were distraction, tiredness, and boredom. For number one, I said, if I get distracted, I will change my position or location. For number two, I said, if I get tired, then I will do 10 pushups and stand outside in the sunlight. Number three, if I get bored, I will do mental contrasting for two minutes and return to work. Ask if there's anything that can reduce friction. Basically, I already live by that. I got my timer set up. And then the last one, before starting, ask if there's any way to make the task more enjoyable 
enjoyable or energizing. Uh, I set up a diffuser, so now it smells really good in here. And I got myself a beverage from the fridge, healthy beverage. Anybody can do five minutes before work session. As you can imagine, I didn't exactly go from a procrastination blob on the couch to Navy SEAL level discipline, which was kind of disappointing because you know that would have been really nice. But despite not having immediate massive improvement, I did notice a slight shift, especially with the first two on the list. Let me tell you a secret to sticking with something, especially when you don't see as much progress as you would like. It's so simple, but it's really profound. And that is that progress is not linear. We often have this idea that progress and learning and improving is this straight line of improvement. The truth is it oftentimes looks more like this where at the beginning you put in a lot of effort and you get very minimal return, but if you stick with it, it begins to compound and, and you get the snowball effect. And that fact is often what keeps me going in a time like this, because I'm hoping that I'm here <laughs> and that it starts snowballing soon. So I stuck with it and I'm, I'm really glad I did because over the next few days, the ability to start was getting easier and easier as it formed into a habit. I think I figured out kind of why this works. There's something really fundamental to progress and that is momentum. It's super easy for me to be like, well, like I don't want to start, but let me just do the the five techniques. Let's go through the, the steps of my plan. Then we'll see how we feel afterward. What ends up happening is that little bit has started to kind of focus my mind on the project and it started to create the a little bit of movement. And then that momentum keeps building and keeps building. We can build those routines for specific things, but this is a routine that's universal and it can be applied to anything that you don't want to do. And those are the routines that are really valuable. But if you do this as well, you'll find that these five methods are not all created equal. And some of them are definitely more effective than others. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the results here because I'd say I've got some pretty significant discoveries considering I've only done this for a few days. I found that a few of these methods dropped my level of resistance to starting the thing by about half, which is pretty good. I'm gonna call that a win in my book. My level of resistance is like a six or a seven. I could force myself to start, but I really don't want to. So I went through the whole checklist, took about five minutes. I would say it's dropped to like a three or a four. At this point, I'm like, I don't wanna keep sitting here and talking and keep working on this. I'm like, let's just do the thing. Like, <laughs> As far as which methods work the best, hands down the first two, which are mental contrasting and implementation intentions, definitely helped me the most. Monitoring and tracking also helped me a fair amount, but it, it more helped me keep going. It didn't really help me start. Removing environmental friction is kind of a nice add-on. It's something that I kind of do naturally, and a lot of people already do this naturally. And as far as making a task more enjoyable and energizing, it's surprisingly easy to deceive yourself with this one. For me, I would sit down and work for two or three minutes, and then I'd be like, ah, you know, this would be way more fun if I had a candle burning here and it smelled really nice. So I go get a candle, light it, sit back down, start working. It's like, ah, you know, I'd really enjoy if I could be sipping on, you know, a latte while I'm sitting here working. So I can go make a latte, come back. And it's really easy to, to do a lot of things like that as a way of making it more enjoyable or energizing or whatever. And really it's just a way of distracting you from the hard task. As for the video project, I would say that I wouldn't have completed it nearly as fast without these methods. Based off of other similar projects, I would say it saved me three to five hours. And if you wanna see the finished product, well, you just did. This video is the project that I was working on. Also, there's a complete minute by minute breakdown of exactly how I spent my time while making this video. So you can see how much time got wasted, how long the whole project took, all the different parts, etc. All of that for completely free down in the description. I've also linked Ali Abdal's video down in the description if you'd like to check that out as well.